I thought it would go to zero. I thought it was a scam. I thought that uh, it was something just used for illicit activity. I thought it would not come to anything. I thought that it would just be a bubble and crash. People have been mining gold for thousands of years. Up until now, there's still gold. But Bitcoin, there's I think around 18 million Bitcoins mined. There will only be 21 million Bitcoins forever. Other than that, there won't be any more Bitcoins. It's so scarce. It's scarcer than gold. Hey guys, so in this video, let's talk about Bitcoin once again because we have very, very interesting news from what happened last week where Goldman Sachs said that Bitcoin is now an investable asset, making a U-turn from what they said last year in May 2020 that Bitcoin is not a real asset. And fast forward a year after, they're actually saying right now that Bitcoin is now an investable asset. Of course, there are idiosyncratic risks because it's relatively new and going to the adoption phase. Now, I want to comment on that disclosure that it goes to show no, a lot of people who did not believe in Bitcoin years ago are now starting to see it in a better light. 2021, we are seeing more and more, not just retailers, but institutions accept Bitcoin as an asset class. So please do note now, when Bitcoin started a couple of years ago, majority of the people investing in it were retailers. Retailers like you and me. Then you had a lot of financial institutions. Then suddenly you had a lot of corporations adding it as part of their balance sheets. And what's very, very interesting is that a lot of people who were openly against it, similar to the disclosure of Goldman Sachs last year versus the disclosure now, are now turning their own leaf. Probably it could be because of a greater study into it. People are taking deeper dives into what Bitcoin actually is. And from what I've seen in Goldman Sachs report, there's just really a larger demand from it from their hedge funds and clients as well. So this is what I do believe. I mentioned this in a previous video that we are not going back on this, meaning the longer Bitcoin is, the more accepted it will become. The longer Bitcoin is, more and more people will actually just use it. The fact that it's here for more than a decade now speaks volumes of how it's being used, speaks volumes that in spite of it crashing massively, that there has been a large amount of people coming in and using it. You can see it, eh, that there are more and more transactions in Bitcoin right now. Even trading volume for Bitcoin is also up right now. Number three is you can also see a larger amount of wallets transacting and storing Bitcoin. If those are clues already for all of us to see that adoption is going on, I don't know what will convince more people to invest. Even me, and I've been saying this over and over in a lot of the videos that, uh, that I wasn't a firm believer of Bitcoin. I thought it would go to zero. I thought it was a scam. I thought that uh, it was something just used for illicit activity. I thought it would not come to anything. I thought that it would just be a bubble and crash. But lo and behold, over and over, in spite of crashes, which is normal in the cryptocurrency market, we've seen it rebound, but not just rebound. As it dropped, it went massively higher than where it went before. And true enough, now we are two days detached from ICON 2021. And to those who attended, thank you so much for you attending the conference that we would organize on a yearly basis. And I hope that you got a lot. But what was interesting was this, layer by layer, even from the different speakers who attended, a lot of them who did not like Bitcoin before have also allotted portions of their portfolio. I remember Rex Mendoza talking massively about Cardano and even on years back, he wasn't also a big fan of Bitcoin. This is what I've realized and for those who are watching this and for those who are investing in cryptos, I'm sure you've realized this also. The more you study the cryptocurrency market, the more you do a deep dive on it, the more you realize that this is something that's investable, the more you would also want to put money in it, the more you would realize that you are at a point in time where you're seeing a technological shift that you have not experienced before, the more you realize that, hey, this is something that you want to be part of. And I'll say this over and over that I don't know where the future will be, but all I know is I want to be part of it. All I know is I want to be invested that when I look back 20 years, 30 years, 40 years from now, I want to say to people, I want to say to family and friends that look at what happened. Look at how much disruption and innovation has happened. And I was part of it. I don't want to be a spectator. I know I won't be able to play a perfect game. I know mistakes will be made. I know that there will be some investments that may not do so well. But what I do know is that we are sitting on something that's very, very special. And that being said, one of the topics that got discussed also during ICON was Bitcoin versus gold. And I've been saying this over and over that I'm a big fan of gold. Um, I have positions even in gold ETFs as well. And even for the longest 
longest time I've been saying to people that gold is a good investment because it's a store of value, because it's a hedge against the dollar, because it's a hedge also when you see markets drop. That gold can give me a narrative that somehow I'm protected from that fall. Somehow I could have a counterbalance also that some of the equity markets are dropping. Gold can be a counterbalance to all of it. Up until now, I'm still a firm believer of it. Even though I'm more bullish on Bitcoin, it doesn't mean I'm not going to invest in gold. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to position in it. It doesn't mean that I don't want exposure. It's just that I'm saying it this way that head to head, you buy gold because of its value. And all of that Bitcoin has. But what Bitcoin has, it has it at a much larger effect. When you buy gold, you need to store it. You have to store your gold. Meaning, the larger your position in gold, the larger your storage will be. And not just that, eh, the more you need to secure it. If you compare that head-to-head with Bitcoin, you don't need a lot of cards. You don't need a vault to protect your Bitcoin. Whereas for gold, you need it. If you have a larger amount of it, especially tangible gold, it will take up a lot of space. For Bitcoin, you don't need a lot of space to be able to store Bitcoin. And in the same way, it's easy to transport for gold. That's hassle. How can you actually do that? How can you actually transport gold bars that easy? You can't do that, especially if it's a large amount of gold that you're carrying. For Bitcoin, you can carry it because it's digital. You can easily carry it wherever you go. And in the same way, I think one of the biggest advantages of Bitcoin because it's digital is basically when you want to transfer the money, you can transfer it anytime. I think that's one very, very good use case of it compared to gold because for retailers like us, the access to be able to sell it or to be able to acquire it also quickly is not as easy as compared to Bitcoin because there's so much exchanges out there. It's easy for you to acquire Bitcoin, but in the same way, it's also easy for you to be able to sell and liquidate it. So in that aspect, I really believe that Bitcoin is 1,000 times better than gold. In the aspect of scarcity alone, people have been mining gold for thousands of years. Up until now, there's still gold. But Bitcoin, there's I think around 18 million Bitcoins mined. There will only be 21 million Bitcoins forever. Other than that, there won't be any more Bitcoins. It's so scarce. It's scarcer than gold. And if you analyze it also from the aspect of Rolexes, paintings, and other items that are considered a store of value, the rarer the Rolex, the more expensive it is. Same with paintings. The rarer the painting, the more popular the artist. If the artist is already dead, the more expensive it is. Same way for Bitcoin. There's only 21 million Bitcoins. And if you analyze it further, there were some Bitcoins that were lost. So say two or three million Bitcoins got lost and after 21 million gets mined, there will only be that much Bitcoin, 18, 19 million circulating. I think it being rare is what will make it something of great value later on. And it sets the template, it sets the stage for other cryptocurrencies out there. Now, I've mentioned this in a lot of the videos that I'm not selling my Bitcoin. I I don't intend to sell my Bitcoin. I don't intend to bring it back in fiat. And the reason why I say that, the reason why I, I think this is so important, think about this. When people discovered land, people would rush into it. There won't be any more land that will be ever created. It doesn't, it doesn't happen like that. It's something that will be very, very scarce. I guess one of the reasons why I'm holding on to it is I actually don't need the money. It's something that's success. It's something that I intended that my mentality for holding Bitcoin is just really to store it to stack it and to accumulate it. That's why I don't plan to sell it because my goal is to hold on to as much of it as possible. Then maybe we'll see later on in the future how it could possibly go. If you own a beachfront property in Boracay, I don't think you're gonna sell it quickly. I don't tell you're gonna sell it in the next six months. I don't think you're gonna sell it in the next two months. Think about it, 1980s, Boracay, you bought a beachfront property there and you believed in it so much that that beach was so nice Would you sell it if there were no tourists coming? Would you sell it because there were a lot of volatility that it was so hard for it to make money? No, you wouldn't. That's how I see also Bitcoin. It's like you getting beachfront property at a point where not a lot of people have discovered it yet. And fast forward, what if you own that piece of property in Boracay right now still? Think about it. It's super valuable, but you don't actually need to sell it also. eh? And that's how I view Bitcoin. And that's why I'm not selling. Primarily from a financial planning standpoint, it's excess money intended primarily to be in Bitcoin, not to be transferred back to fiat. Intended for me to be able to stockpile. Then let's see in the next few years, how will that change? But as of now, I'm holding on to as much of it as possible. I'm stacking as much as I can, and I don't plan to bring it back to the fiat. I've been mentioning about Bitcoin, 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 Bitcoin. But if you've been hearing out all of my videos, I have more allocations in Ethereum 
even in BNB because I really believe in its utility. And the reason why I say that is this, the tokens and the coins that will win are the ones that have more utility. The tokens and the coins that will win are the ones that are used. The tokens and the coins that will win are the ones that people will use it on a regular basis. People get enticed to buy the cheap ones thinking that this is something that could probably be the next Bitcoin, could probably be the next Ethereum. Well and good, but what you always ask yourself when you buy it, what is this replacing? What is this token? What is this coin replacing? What is this disrupting? What is this innovating? What is this doing to make the lives of people better? Because if it's doing none of that, no matter how exciting it is, no matter how much it's talked about, then it doesn't have any staying power. Please remember what will make the token or crypto interesting for years to come is that there's so much use for it. So there, I really believe that we are early. I really believe that we are at the point where there will be a larger adaption of this, the cryptocurrency market. I really believe that all of this buzz that's being created, all of the upward movement will create a greater awareness for people to understand it even more. And that happened to me. And that made me realize the beauty of what it is. So that's it for now. If you want to invest in the cryptocurrency market, check out Binance Below. They're the largest crypto exchange in the world. And you can actually buy, sell crypto for just 10 US dollars. Imagine for less than 500 pesos, you now have the ability also to have a shot and try how crypto investing and actually trading works as well. For those who want to learn more how to trade Philippine, US, and crypto markets, links are in the description below on my next technical analysis class. This is where we're going to talk about candlesticks, um, support and resistance, trend lines, MACD, Bollinger Bands, Parabolics, are, and so much more. It's happening this July. It will be via Zoom. It's online. So if you're from other parts of the world, this is for you. If you are someone who's also busy, it's done over the weekend, two weekends, Saturday, Sunday, all half days. Links are in the description below if you want to join us. And I have books that I've written. They're all available in National Bookstore and Shopee if you want to grab a copy of it. Links are in the description below, but it's about the basics of the market. For those who want to learn technicals and fundamentals, book style, it's there as well. And if you're new to this, appreciate it if you can like, share, subscribe. This is just me and my context of why I'm investing more and more and more and more into the cryptocurrency market space. You don't have to buy just because I talk about it. Please take the time to learn it on your own. Please take the time to build the conviction because in this space, conviction matters. That's it for now, Marvin Germo. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon and God bless you all. Thank you.